Excellent. Right, so it's me again. Um, so <laughs> an introduction, I've already introduced myself. I'm Paul Brown, uh, remote sensing scientist and geomatic surveyor. I work for a company called Farrah Science Limited. Um, we formerly the Food and Environment Research Agency, an arm's length body of DEFRA. But in 2015, we moved into a joint venture with 75% uh, owned by a private company, in this case, Capita, and DEFRA retaining 25%. So my main focus in my role is translating science into services uh, that support um, environmental policy and uh, environmental benefit. Um, two brief examples I'm going to touch on today is tree establishment and condition monitoring. So looking at how we monitor, for example, the extent of the treescape in the entirety of the UK. And we've been discussing quite extensively at lunch uh, biodiversity net gain, which is giving a lot of people a lot of work at the moment. So I was writing this presentation yesterday and I remembered a talk I gave God, back in 2018, so sort of around the same time as uh, this program started. And we were discussing the research and operational gap. I, I'm a remote sensing scientist, and remote sensors are great at a pilot study. Uh, we, we're good at classifying a single woodland, and we're, we're good at showing the power of this data and how we use machine learning algorithms to segment and to classify. But stakeholders you know, want to see the big picture. They're concerned into what's going on over a large area of land, but they also want to see that detail as well. So, this was what I call the, there's an operational need, there's a research, what we do, and then there's this gap. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we upscale our um, nice pilot studies, our proof of concepts? And this is where digital comes in, and digital technology. And the two things I'm going to just briefly talk about today are cloud computing. Again, we discussed this quite a lot over lunch, look at tree monitoring and how we upscale, um, and data availability. Uh, just having that more data available to us and a choice of data for looking at BNG, biodiversity net gain baseline. So this is an attractive slide. Um, so yeah, that's just, a, we've, we saw an architecture earlier on. So this is another architecture of how we take a traditional workflow, a remote sensing workflow, and transpose that into an automated cloud computing environment. So we went to AWS, uh, Amazon Web Services, and said, look, you know, we have this proof of concept uh, study. You know, firstly, we have to search for an image and go on online archives. Then we have to download an image. Then we have to process the image. Then we have to do so many steps, so many different software packages just to get to that analysis ready data. And then once we get to that data, we move it into some other software packages. We develop a classification algorithm. We develop whatever algorithm we're doing on it. We run that data through, and then we work out a way to disseminate the results to a customer. And that takes, for one Sentinel, for one satellite scene, you're looking, it could take days to do that. And it's just not viable to be able to do that um, over large areas of land. So what we did is we built an automated environment in AWS, where in the top left-hand corner you see the user. That's the person that has the input. They say, OK, I want to look at this satellite scene. This is looking at Sentinel-2 data. So I want this satellite scene. I want it from this, these months of this year, and I want, I'll accept this amount of cloud cover. Press go, it will go and search Earth on AWS, um, where, all the, where the sensor data is archived. And then if there's a scene available, it will download the scene. If there's multiple scenes available, it will download the one with the least cloud cover. It will then move into all the pre-processing steps to get to that analysis ready data. So this is scalable computing. So it will process one image at the same time as it would process 200 images. So it's a really quick way of getting that, those laborious processing steps out of the way. Then have your analysis ready data, then moves to a um, analysis section, which we wanted to build proprietary software in, in this case, e-cognition. So building licensing into a cloud environment as well, because we, we wanted to make it as hard as possible for ourselves. Um, and then using our machine learning segmentation, our algorithms, the rule set and the condition just loaded into the, the cloud. And then it disseminates the results via a web app. And the example here is, the, I think, the seven satellite scenes there. That would traditional workflows. It take you weeks to do that. Um, it takes about half an hour to do it in the, the automated environment. And this is just looking at tree extent. You have to excuse this slide. There's not that many trees in the UK. But it's um, just 
the way it is um, shown at this far back from the data. That's the way it's rendered. So the second, my last, last bit is just looking at um, BNG baselining. Uh, so this is a service. You know, we're a translational science organization. Occasionally, we'll release a commercial service. It just coincides that the most successful one was released pretty much the same time as I was also PIing a um, NERC project. So it's been a, been a busy couple of years. Uh, so this is called LAN360. And this service would not have been possible five to 10 years ago just because of the data availability. When we're talking data availability, we're talking satellite data. 10 years ago, cloud-free image every you know, weeks or months from Landsat. Now we've got you know, Airbus Constellation, Maxar, a planet constellation, multiple cubes. That's got so much satellite data we can choose from that it's relatively straightforward to get a recent satellite data. And what we do with that data is we then create habitat maps. We use Ordnance Survey Master Map as an initial spatial framework, and we enhance that master map from the satellite imagery using segmentation algorithms and heads-up digitizing. Um, once we have that habitat map, we then run it through the Natural England metric tool to create your biodiversity units baseline. And this is where we've been talking about BNG policy recently. This is where we can then look at our habitat creation plans um, for increasing um, habitat from, for land, land stakeholders who want to look at that blended finance model, the models that will be replacing the old CAP basic payment scheme and moving into the ELMS. So they're just two kind of services that have been made possible um, over the last few years and have bridged that research and operational gap and allowed us to commercialize data and digital. Thank you.